Okay, so this is where the Stubberton Bypass is going to come off the A27. And they're going to come through this gap here. And they're going to take it right through what we call this gyratory. You might recognise some of this. And it's going to cut through. They've got to cut all these trees down, which is really unfortunate. It's always a great shame when trees have to be cut down. Now, many of these cars are probably coming in from Gosport, and they, I'm sure some of them really want the bypass. Some of them are probably thinking, why are they cutting all these trees down? In the construction of all these bypasses and housing estates and all these things, people have jobs. And no doubt the guy driving that lorry is quite happy it's going ahead because he's got a job. So we can really get a good idea here now what's happening. These are the fields where the daffodils at the moment and the strawberries later on in the year are all grown. And unfortunately the bypass is going to cut through this lovely countryside. Now this area is what they call a strategic gap. There's a gap between Fareham and Stubbington and the idea is to try and stop the two towns actually merging together. To be like now the fear is that if they put a bypass through here in a road give more access and then we might have housing. Okay so here's the actual spot where it's going to leave the Tishfield to Stubbington Road. It heads off through what is now the strategic gap up into the distance over there. This picture here really summarises what we might lose. Farmers need to grow some land, grow some land, grow some um, crops on their land. They're busy doing that. People need to go for a walk. They're busy doing that. And this is where people walk their dogs, of course. This picture pretty well summarises the whole topic. You've got urban development. If you have a look between those posts, you'll see some deer struggling to hang on to what's left of their precious landscape. This is their home, this is where they live. We need to make sure we allow them to have space to live, really. We need open spaces like this just to come and chill out and have a picnic. So this is potentially the area of land that after the bypass has gone through, people think might be up for development. Great shame that some lovely old trees got to be a good 20 years old, maybe 50 years old, even older. Some of these have to be cut, cut down. The bypass goes past this massive solar farm. We haven't seen a solar farm before, here we are. Solar power, renewable energy, non-polluting. A view looking back from where we just come from. Okay, bypasses and developments generate jobs, and I guess that's why you're at school to get a job. These guys have got a job doing some fencing. Okay, so the bypass meets up with this industrial estate here, the Solent Airport. 
Okay, so it looks like we've got six new aviation hangars here. Direct access onto the taxiway, that's the runway. And this is the entrance to what they're calling the Faraday Business Park. So the idea of having these industrial units is that uh, people can work here. And if you've got a job, well, you've got somewhere paying for your house and paying for school fees if you want to, and uh, fill your fridge with food and go on holidays and things like that. And it's important that that happens alongside looking after wildlife, and alongside, you know, the glory here. So, there it goes. Alongside looking after wildlife and uh, people also need homes, so this whole development has a social, environmental and economic theme. Okay, what have we got here? Okay, this is the Farm Innovation Centre at Daedalus. The bypass is linking directly to, these, to this industrial estate, so that should make it easier to get here, in which case more people want to set up their businesses here, which would be good for jobs in the area, make the wealth of the area slightly higher possibly. This is CMOS College, the engineering college. Some of you might go to one day, you never know. Just a little drive through here past some of the industrial estates. Lots of units here. Fire system. Place there. Thanks. engineering stuff. They're, they're doing it up a bit, make it look a bit nicer. And that's where the Coast Guard hangs out. That's where the helicopter goes from. Get back to here. And in here they make big uh, hulls for boats. But actually it should look quite small once it's all finished. Now down the end here we got a new a newer housing estate. But obviously you all need a house becomes another contentious issue. But where do we build the houses? Do we use the lovely green space? Or do we use parts of old houses, old um, industrial estates have seen better days? Lots of nice advertising for the new homes they're building down here. Quite nice homes, but not a huge amount of space as usual. Nowadays they seem to try and cram as many homes into a small place to make more money. Okay, so from watching this film, hopefully you've got a really good idea of the environmental, the social and the economic factors that go into building any new bypass or industrial estate or housing estate where we all need to live. And um, hopefully you've learned lots and lots and when we eventually we get back into the classroom, we'll have another little discussion on this. Thanks for watching.